This is Paris Island, South Carolina, training ground for United States Marines. Young men and women come here in quest of honor, pride, and spirit. The training is tough and uncompromising, but all who come have chosen to take up the Corps' challenge, to try to become one of the few, the proud. The next 12 unforgettable weeks will present the most intense physical, mental, and emotional demands imaginable. Not all who come here will succeed. But to gut it out, to see the training all the way through, the reward is a title that lasts forever. That title is Marine. Although the Marines first landed on Paris Island in the mid-1800s, it would be 1891 before a detachment would be permanently stationed here. The Marines served as guards while a large wooden dry dock was under construction. Designated as Marine Barracks U.S. Naval Station, Fort Royal, South Carolina in 1886, it would be 1893 before the first barracks were actually built. In 1911, the Navy redesignated Paris Island as the U.S. Naval Disciplinary Barracks, Port Royal. Marines worked as brig guards under the command of the Navy. As the United States drew closer to entering World War I, the country experienced a dramatic rise in patriotism. To keep pace with recruitment and the need to standardize Marine training, the Navy turned Paris Island over to the Corps in 1915. In October of that year, the USS Prairie steamed into the Beaufort River, carrying the first 750 men for the newly established training base. Just two years later, the first Paris Island trained Marines would see battle in the bloody trenches of France. Eventually, more than 46,000 Marines were trained for duty in World War I. Then, between 1922 and the mid-1930s, recruit training slowed with only about 300 recruits reporting each month. But after the United States entered World War II in 1941, the training pace intensified to the point where more than 6,800 new recruits reported monthly. In total, more than 204,000 Marines were trained for service in World War II, with as many as 20,000 being trained at one time. In 1946, Marine Corps leaders reorganized the post at Paris Island and decided to give it a designation that would reflect its primary mission, the training of Marine recruits. That's when it became the world-famous Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island, South Carolina. Women Marines are also an integral part of Paris Island's history. First arriving in 1943 as reservists, in 1949, the year following the passing of the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, a separate battalion exclusively for the training of female recruits was permanently established at Paris Island. And today, the primary mission at what is perhaps the most famous military post in the world continues to be the producing of highly disciplined, basically trained Marines. For those who've experienced it, it's a night that'll never be forgotten. The arrival at the International Airport in Charleston, South Carolina, and the encounter with that first figure of authority in a Marine uniform. It didn't take long to figure out that life was going to be different from now on. From now on, you are subject to the Uniform Code of Military Justice. It had already been a long day, but it was really just beginning. Now, while you're there at Paris Island, I want you to give those drill instructors 110% at all times. Do you understand me? Yes, sir! Now, you wanted to be a Marine, it's time to take up that challenge. Marie 
Corps Crew Depot, Paris, Island, South Carolina. On it leaves you dazed, General, confused, General and more than anything, scared. Almost Scott afraid to think of what might be coming UCMJ, next. As the hair comes off, feelings change, to say nothing of appearances. It's all part of making a group of individuals into a team. Uniformity in appearance is essential. Then, with the initial uniform issue, the last outward trappings of civilian life are removed. With the exception of the haircuts, the process for incoming females is essentially the same. For the first few days, it's very busy. At this point, sleep is high on everyone's wish list. But there's no indication that's going to happen anytime soon. There's apparently much to do before training really begins. I don't care if it's squirting blood out of it. Don't touch it. with 
the same beliefs that recruits we have are also before. taught early on and about the core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Foundation on something before that leaving here, these ideals will be instilled deep into everyone's up. heart and We're mind. It back out. Also, in these first few weeks, the building of self confidence is stressed. While at the same time, recruits are learning to depend more on each other. Already starting to perform physical feats far beyond anything that was expected. By now, the thinking is more in terms of unit than individual. After two weeks of training, the routine is starting to take hold, and each day seems to bring something new. Today, it's the first running of the confidence course. At first, the course didn't look too intimidating, but once underway, some of the obstacles are a little harder than they appeared from a distance. In all, there are 11 stations, each presenting a different challenge, with names like the Run, Jump, and Swing, the Monkey Bridge, and the skyscraper. And of course, the slide for life, the ultimate confidence building. After climbing a cargo net about 20 feet up to a platform, you slide down one of three gradually descending ropes for 60 feet over a pool of water. On the way down, you have to make position changes. It's quite a relief to finally get your feet back on solid ground. Academic instruction also begins early in boot camp. By the end of basic training, every recruit will have received nearly 300 hours of classes covering subjects such as Marine Corps history and how to administer first aid on the battlefield. Since arriving on Paris Island, it's been said repeatedly that moral fitness is a key element to becoming a Marine. The Corps wants every Marine to embody solid character traits and to make those traits a part of their daily lives. The core values of honor, courage, and commitment form the bedrock of a Marine's character, a fact that's emphasized consistently throughout training. Add to that integrity, discipline, loyalty, and teamwork, and there's little doubt left in anyone's mind that exemplary behavior and a positive attitude are as essential to being a Marine as physical achievement. At Leatherneck Square, close combat training begins. Hand-to-hand -hand combat and bayonet fighting. The warrior spirit is in there somewhere, and this training is meant to bring it out. Recruits discover, some to their surprise, that they can be aggressive when they have to be. Mixing it up with pugil sticks, simulated bayonets, can be a real eye-opener. It's up close and personal contact, a new experience for many.
safety instructions and detailed demonstrations are given before anyone is ever allowed to descend from the 45-foot tower. But once accomplished, there's a growing sense that self-confidence is building with every passing day. The gas chamber. Most will tell you this wasn't their favorite event. But everyone understands how important it is to learn how to prepare for a nuclear, biological, or chemical attack. After receiving instruction in assembling, maintaining, and using a gas mask, it's single file into the chamber. After a few minutes, once the noxious smoke fills the room, the instructor says, take the mask off. Then, after what seems like an eternity, to put it back on again. You learn very quickly whether or not you've donned the mask properly. After a short period, it's back out of the chamber to regroup and breathe some fresh air, an experience nobody will ever take for granted again. <laughs> the next two weeks is set aside for marksmanship training at Weapons and Field Training Battalion. The Marine Corps marksmanship program involves a comprehensive three-phase approach. In the first week, instruction deals with safety and firing procedures, proper sling adjustments, and shooting positions. This is known as snap-in week. During firing week, live ammunition is fired from set distances on the known distance or KD course. Qualifying with the rifle is a graduation requirement, so it's essential to do the best you can. Finally, after steadily improving rifle skills during practice firing, the big moment arrives. Qualification day. Following the rifle range, it's a week of either mess or maintenance duties. Some work in the mess hall serving chow, while others are assigned maintenance duties elsewhere on the depot. This is usually a less stressful part of the training process, a welcome break from the drill instructors, and it also gives them a break from their recruits. It's a good time to recharge batteries and get ready for the final push. It's called A-Line, and training is devoted to firing weapons at multiple and moving targets, or to night fire using tracer rounds to pinpoint fields of fire. is the final test. It's 54 long, grueling, virtually non-stop hours with very little food, practically no sleep, and nearly 40 miles of humps, most of it with full packs. Everything that's been learned to this point is applied here, as everyone gets pushed to the threshold of their physical, mental, and moral limits. It's unit before self as teamwork and core values are emphasized over and over again. It begins at 2 a.m. during the 11th and final week of training. The last week anyone here will be called recruit but it will be a long two and a half days before it's over. During the crucible, the challenges come from a series of warrior stations, each named for a Marine Corps hero whose life and death epitomized the core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Jumping, jump away! After the platoons have been broken down into 12 to 16 member teams, each event pits a team against the clock and their assignment. At the infiltration course, the progress is cautious in conditions created to simulate the chaos of battle. Along the way, one team member
member is designated as a casualty. The rest must now evacuate their wounded comrade to safety while still completing the task at hand. Lesson learned? Marines never, ever leave their wounded on the battlefield. How are you doing as far as your buddy there? After the event, the teams are assembled and the drill instructors discuss with them how their particular assignment was handled and how it might be done better the next time. So far, so good. Day one is well underway. In the coming hours, recruits will confront several situations which test their problem solving and leadership skills. Above all else, it's understood that working together as a team will ultimately be the key to success. 18 hours have passed since step off, and by now, everyone's at the brink of exhaustion. But as it turns out, there's still a lot to do before this first day of the crucible comes to an end. The night infiltration course simulates a resupply mission, and it's very similar to the daytime running of this same course, except that now it's necessary to find both the energy and the will to continue. Like day one, which finally came to a merciful end, day two also begins long before sunrise. Working on only about four hours of sleep, there's no one who isn't weary, but also no one who will be allowed to quit. Patience is short, and nerves are on edge. It's time to regroup, to get it together. This is a good test to see how well the teams and the individuals are handling the pressure. Somehow, everyone manages to work through the fatigue and frustration, and when necessary, even to find the reserves to push and encourage each other. As the sun begins to set on day two, there's a sense that maybe, just maybe, the end is actually in sight, and everyone's going to make it. It's probably still too soon to be thinking about this now, but at this stage, it's pretty much a loss that no one's going to give up. This has gone way too far to stop. What was started together will be finished together.
just know instinctively that you're forever changed. You are Marines. Following the emblem ceremony, it was time for a warrior's feast. The steak and eggs were great, but somehow, the greatest thrill was finally being able to sit and really talk with the drill instructors, the Marines who'd made everyone at that breakfast into Marines. It's now the last week of boot camp, transition week. Things are a little more relaxed, but truthfully, you don't forget for a second that you're still on Paris Island. Besides, nobody's out of here yet. With the battalion commander's inspection, the final seal of approval is still to come. Even though the title Marine has now been bestowed, everyone understands that things like PT, military decorum, and self-discipline are going to be a way of life for as long as the uniform is worn. Even now, on the eve of graduation, there's a five-mile run. Led by the company officers and drill instructors, it's called the motivation run. This isn't really like the PT of these past weeks, though. It's more a celebration of what's been accomplished. It's also family day. And for most, the first time family and friends have been seen for at least 13 weeks. For others, it's been even longer. This day has been a long time coming. The next day begins like so many have during the past three months, but everyone understands that it really is different. It's the last day on Paris Island, and even more importantly, it's the day when the Corps will officially unveil its newest Marines. It's graduation day. The term Devil Dog is used today as a friendly reference between Marines, but the nickname has a proud history. It was first given to the Marines by German troops who fought against them at the Battle of Bellow Wood in World War I. In 1921, Major General Smedley Butler introduced the first Bulldog as a Marine mascot. Now entering the parade deck is Paris Island's own Devil Dog, Iron Mike. Iron Mike is an English Bulldog who enlisted in the Marine Corps on the 1st of August, 1998. He reported for recruit training on the 2nd of October 1998 and graduated on the 7th of December. He was meritoriously promoted to his present rank of Private First Class on the 2nd of December 1998. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of Troops, Captain Willie Stansel. The staff for today's parade is comprised of Marines from the 3rd Recruit Training Battalion. The Marine marching across the parade deck is Captain Nicholas Martinson. He is the parade adjutant and will very shortly give the command to begin the ceremony. His position when he halts indicates where the right flank of the formation will rest. Once positioned, he will draw his sword and supervise the placement of the formation.
since 1891, and more than one million Marines have been trained here. They have departed Paris Island for combat and conflicts throughout the world. The misty wheat fields of Bellow Wood, the gritty beaches of the Pacific, the snow-capped mountains of Korea, the sweltering jungles of Vietnam, the parched desert sands of Southwest Asia, and hundreds of other places where Marines have sacrificed for country and corps. The first called upon, the first to arrive, and the first to fight. The Marine Corps, the nation's force in readiness, has answered the call to numerous hotspots around the globe, showing the world once again that the United States Marine Corps is America's premier 911 force. This island is so rich in history, so rich in tradition, that no Marine trained here ever forgets the sights and sounds of it. Marching onto the parade ground are Company L and Company P. They began their training on the 28th of September, 1999, and today's graduation marks the end of a demanding and difficult 12 weeks of training for them. These young men and women you see marching before you have met and mastered the challenges of recruit training. They have qualified with the service rifle and received basic warrior training. They have completed over 200 hours of academic instruction and participated in a rigorous physical training program that has developed their strength and stamina for the challenges ahead. Core Values has instilled in each of them the meaning of honor, courage, and commitment. Marching before you this morning are 446 success stories, each of them a testament to the physical courage, dogged determination, and unyielding commitment to excellence that define the title Marine. This is what they have strived and persevered for, the right to walk across this parade deck as Marines. They have earned this title through demonstrated courage and achievement, and now join the proud ranks of over one million Marines who have graduated from Paris Island. From this day on, they will carry on the proud legacy and history of the United States Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, the Marines of Company L and Company P. from left to right in order to get them into their exact positions for the ceremony.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem. presents the command to the commander of troops, indicating that the parade is formed.
number 1999. Command duty officer today is Captain Poe. Command duty officer tomorrow is Captain Light. Order up S A Kennedy. Marine General, United States Marine Corps. Commanding officer. At the Command Officer Center March, all unit commanders and guide on bearers march to the front and center of the formation. Historically, it was at this point that the commanding officer would issue orders and instructions to the unit commanders. Following this, the unit commanders would face about, return to their units, and pass the information on to their Marines. nation's history, millions of men and women have earned the title United States Marine. Many who have helped to shape our history join us here today. In keeping with the slogan, once a Marine, always a Marine, we would like to recognize them. We ask that those men and women in the audience who have served in the United States Marine Corps, please rise. Please join us in showing our appreciation for their dedicated service to Corps and country. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Lieutenant Commander Deborah McGuire, the chaplain of the 4th Recruit Training Battalion, will deliver the invocation. Ladies and
and gentlemen, spiritual development plays an important part in the making of United States Marine. This prayer was written by the Marines of Companies L and P. Let us pray. O oh God, we gather today to thank you for the courage, strength, and patience you gave us to reach the goal of becoming United States Marine. Working together through the clash of cultures and personalities, you forged us into a team. We thank you, Lord, for being our support through the physical, mental, and spiritual trials of training. You have blessed us with loving families and friends who have supported us while we were here. Thank you for bringing them safely to share this special moment with us. We pray that you will continue to watch over them and us in the future. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the commanding officer of the 4th Recruit Training Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Adrian Fraser Darling. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of our commanding general, General Stephen A. Cheney, I'd like to welcome you and our special guest, Lieutenant General Klemp to Paris Island this morning and thank you for taking the time and the effort to share this very special occasion with your new Marines. I'd also like to thank our visitors from the north for bringing with you your weather. And we have shared your pain and we would kindly ask that you take it with you when you go home today. Now I know the family members are very excited about the prospect of sharing the holiday season with your new Marine. But I have a special Christmas present for the parents in the group. Admittedly, it's taken the Marine Corps to do it. But while here at Paris Island, in addition to learning how to fire an M16 service rifle and how to negotiate the obstacle course, your teenager has mastered the fine art of making his or her bed. Now, if you get home and the corners aren't sharp enough, if the blanket isn't tight enough, Send them back. The DIs will gladly spend a little one-on-one -on -one time with them to get it right. Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, over the past 12 weeks, these young people standing behind me have undertaken some of the most difficult military training found in America today. Training so challenging that one in every six recruits who arrives here on Paris Island fails to make his or her goal of becoming a United States Marine. As a battalion commander, I am often asked, what is it about the Marine Corps? How come Marine Corps boot camp is so tough? Well, ladies and gentlemen, because we, the Marine Corps, take our motto, first to fight, very seriously. Because in a few short months, these young Americans may be engaged in peacekeeping missions abroad, or tasked with supporting humanitarian assistance operations in third world countries, or perhaps they will be taking part and drug intervention patrols along our nation's borders. And we, the Marine Corps, 
We owe it to you, the parents. We owe it to our nation. But most importantly, we owe it to these young Americans to give them every opportunity to succeed. Marine Corps boot camp is tough, ladies and gentlemen, because sometimes in life there are no second chances. I would like to thank the parents here today for entrusting with us your most precious asset, your children. And more importantly, for instilling in them a desire to serve and to sacrifice themselves for a greater good. For in doing so, you have given both our Corps and our nation tomorrow's leaders. And as you depart Paris Island today and return home to your local towns, I would ask that you take a moment to thank your recruiter because it was she or he who first saw the potential in your young Marine and assisted them in taking those initial steps which made this day possible. And finally, I would ask that you would join me in a round of applause for the magnificent drill instructor standing before you today who routinely dedicate over a hundred hours a week to ensure that your Marine receives the finest training possible and in doing so guarantees the very future of our Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, the DIs. Now at this point, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to address our new Marines. Good morning, Marines. Does that sound good or what, ladies and gentlemen? Marines, you may not yet realize it, but the most difficult thing you did in boot camp was get on that bus to Paris Island. The second most difficult thing you did was to get off that bus. Those few steps of personal courage redefined your very life and brought you where you are today. Wherever your journey in life takes you, be true to our core. Be true to our core values of honor, courage, commitment. And trust me, you will find no task too difficult. You will find no challenge too daunting. Because now you can do anything. You are a United States Marine. Ladies and gentlemen, our Corps' newest members. Reviewing today's graduation ceremony, is Lieutenant General Jack W. Klim. Lieutenant General Klimp graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1968 and was subsequently commissioned a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. Following basic school, he served in Vietnam as a platoon commander, executive officer, and company commander of Company G, 2nd Battalion, 1st Marine Regiment. Subsequent command tours included reconnaissance company and recruit training company commander, commanding officer recruiting station Phoenix, Arizona, 
Battalion Commander, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marine Regiment, and Commander, Task Force Mogadishu and Marine Forces Somalia during Operation Restore Hope. In June 1993, he was assigned as Commanding General, Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island, and the Eastern Recruiting Region. General Klimp assumed duties as the Commanding General, Marine Corps Recruiting Command in July 1995. Promoted to Lieutenant General in November 1998, he assumed his current assignment as the Deputy Commandant for Manpower and Reserve Affairs. Lieutenant General Klimp's personal decorations include the Defense Superior Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star Medal with Combat V, the Defense Super Meritorious Service Medal, the Joint Service Commendation Medal, the Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Award, the Navy Achievement Medal, the Combat Action Ribbon, and the Korean Order of National Security Merit Samuel Medal. Lieutenant General Klimp is accompanied by Brigadier General Stephen A. Cheney, the Commanding General of Marine Corps Recruit Depot Paris Island and the Eastern Recruiting Region. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as we render honors to Lieutenant General Klimp. interview we ask that as the national colors pass before you you please rise after they have passed please be seated
3104, Gunnery Sergeant John Lupton. He is assisted by drill instructors Gunnery Sergeant Jeffrey Dixon, Sergeant Kevin Kenny, Sergeant Jarvis Rayner, and Sergeant Michael Walker. The senior drill instructor of platoon 3105, Staff Sergeant Noel Acevedo Colon. He is assisted by drill instructors Sergeant John Gonzales, Sergeant Michael Lee, Sergeant Sean Wright, and Sergeant Christopher Garza. Platoon 3106, led by Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant John Kogan. He is assisted by Drill Instructors Staff Sergeant Philip Jordan, Sergeant Anthony Sandville, Sergeant Mellon Porsche, and Sergeant James Bruinsma. The Senior Drill Instructor of Platoon 3107, Staff Sergeant Adam Muncy. He is assisted by Drill Instructors Staff Sergeant Rodney Harris, Staff Sergeant Randy Walden, and Staff Sergeant Jeffrey Beagle. Lieutenant Tobin Brevitz and the graduating Marines of the 3,108 series. His series gunnery sergeant is gunnery sergeant Frederick Lanning. The senior drill instructor of platoon 3,108, Staff Sergeant Terrence Cole. He is assisted by drill instructors Sergeant Derek Schumann, Sergeant William Toronto, Sergeant Clayton Pettis, and Sergeant Jason Jones. The senior drill instructor of platoon 3109, Staff Sergeant Kenneth Bone. He is assisted by drill instructors Staff Sergeant David Bryan, Staff Sergeant John Rogers, Sergeant Michael Daly, and Sergeant Jonathan Lindquist. The senior drill instructor of platoon 3110, Gunnery Sergeant Barry Williams. He is assisted by drill instructors Sergeant Troy Britton, Sergeant Ira Dollum, Sergeant Jason Raymond, and Sergeant John Wyatt. <laughs> Captain Juliet Clapp and the graduating Marines of the 4040 series. Her series Gunnery Sergeant is Gunnery Sergeant Lillian Diaz. The senior drill instructor of platoon 4040, Staff Sergeant Paulette McCarthy. She is assisted by drill instructors Staff Sergeant Lena Amos, Staff Sergeant Martha Whitehead, and Sergeant Jacqueline Elazier. Ladies and gentlemen, the honor platoon of Company P, platoon 4041, led by senior drill instructor Staff Sergeant April Joplin. She is assisted by drill instructors Staff Sergeant Jennifer Coxon, Staff Sergeant Stephanie McBride, and Staff Sergeant Jeanette Smith.
gentlemen, the commanding officers of Company L and Company P, Captain Willie Stancil and Captain Christina Griffin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Marine Corps tradition of every Marine as a rifleman begins in recruit training. Prior to graduation, each Marine undergoes intensive marksmanship instruction and is required to qualify with the M16A2 service rifle, firing a total of 50 rounds from distances of 200, 300, and 500 yards. Physical fitness also plays an important part in the life of every Marine. The spirit of overall physical well-being is instilled and strengthened.